Hello everybody out there on this out here on this Sunday morning. I want to talk to you about something this morning very briefly. It was just impressed upon my heart to uh, talk about this. Um, <clears throat> as we know, the suicide rate is up pretty high now, um, especially among military um, people in the. Um, even the LGBT uh, and some Christians and COVID <clears throat> COVID patients. So we hear that the suicide rate is up very high. Um, <clears throat> and what I want to leave you with this morning is what to do about it. Okay, what to do about it. It's a very simple answer. It's really a very simple answer. Uh, to the problem. I've dealt with suicide in my life, um, over the course of my life, at least four times. And uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to get, it was hard to get some people to understand why would you be suicidal. Uh, but that would be another subject altogether. As a matter of fact, I didn't realize that I I have my I have been suicidal um, until just here recently. So I kind of looked back over my life and I realized I was suicidal. But and I guess the reason why I didn't notice it is because God just kept me from noticing. He just didn't want me to see myself as that. Okay, <clears throat> but. Um, I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna tell you what helped me every time, at least four times. One time when I was a teenager, 16, 17 years old, uh, I was suicidal then, and uh, the next time I was like 26, 27, and the next time I was in my 40s, like 40. I don't know, 41, 42. And just here recently, uh, I was press. Okay, I was I was press with suicide and thoughts and tempted with suicide. I was press. It wasn't something that I wanted, but it was something that was pressing me. But anyway, there's a solution. There's a solution. And... You know, I, I can recall there, there's, there were at least two people in the Bible that committed suicide. And one was an Old Testament. His name was King Saul. He was a king before David. He was the first king of Israel. David was the second king. But King Saul wasn't what God wanted. Uh... But the Israelites insisted on having a king, and so God gave them King Saul. But evidently, he didn't work out. And in the end, he killed himself. And the next person I know that was suicidal, actually killed themselves in the Bible, was Judas. Judas killed himself. Now... <clears throat> I don't believe neither one of those per people, I don't believe neither one of them were saved. I don't believe that. I can't say that everybody that killed themselves are not saved. I can't say that. But I believe for the most part, most of them are not. Okay? Because the scripture says, whoever destroys the body, God is going to destroy them. Okay? So you can't, I don't, that wouldn't be a good option. As a matter of fact, the only reason why most of the time, the only reason why I didn't commit suicide because I knew that if I went before God <clears throat> by way of suicide, he would reject me. So that was probably the primary reason why I didn't, I never did commit suicide. But um, those two people, I don't believe were saved because the Bible said, the Bible talks about refers to Judas as the son of perdition. 
of the son of destruction. And we know that uh, King Saul, when he summoned uh, the prophet, what was his name? Prophet Samuel, I believe. After Samuel, the prophet Samuel had died, King Saul summoned him. And King Saul told him, there's nothing I can do for you. Okay, so, um, I don't believe neither one of them is saved. So if you... If you're contemplating suicide, I'm going to give you the answer. But first of all, I want to tell you, if you do, there's a very good chance God is going to reject you if you go before him, okay? And you probably won't spend eternity in paradise with him. Um, <clears throat> now, I found out the reason why, the reason why I was suicidal Okay, over the year over the years I realized the reason why I was suicidal is because I'm gonna tell you the primary reason why. Because my heart Okay, my heart was enthralled over something else or someone else. Instead of having given my heart to God, to uh, uh, to Christ, my heart was entangled with something else I loved more than Him. That's the reason. And I notice each time I was suicidal, um, I was out of God's will. I was completely out of God's will. And the two things that Saul and um, Judas had in common was they were both totally out of God's will. Saul did not do, he never did what God told him to do. And um, Judas, of course, betrayed Christ. Okay, he betrayed Christ. Both of these men were totally out of God's will. And when I look back at my life, my life was the same way. Okay, I remember the first time, the first when I was a teenager, the first time I was contemplating suicide, I was uh, uh, God was dealing with me about going to church and just doing right. I mean, He was really working with me, but I had other things on my mind. Okay, I had other things on my mind, girls like girls, and uh, over time, it's just you just. Life just drains you of your joy. Okay, problems just drain you. This drains you of your joy and your happiness. Happiness, joy, and happiness can take you a long ways. Gladness can take you a long ways through life. But if there's something in your life that is always sapping you of your gladness and your joy, uh, eventually you begin. You be, uh, become hopeless. You feel hopeless. Life is just hopeless. And it's meaningless, become meaningless. And the desire to check out of the desire to kill yourself will be much stronger than the desire to live. Uh, the, uh, the second time I was suicidal, I, uh, I was um, out of God's will again. Okay, God had told me to stop drinking, stop smoking dope. And I hated smoking dope, but I still did it anyway. I never, I didn't really enjoy drinking, but I did it anyway because it was, I was, I was always trying to find happiness. That's, that's been my life. I've always been just trying to be happy, you know, and all through my life, I just wanted to be happy and glad and, you know, just feel good. I mean, that's just the way I've been all my life. And so people used to think that, even when it came to working, people would think that I was lazy because of my attitude toward working, but it wasn't that. It was that I just wanted to be happy. I mean, nothing seemed to brought me happiness. And, when, and, and work certainly didn't. You know, I enjoyed making money and stuff, but, but <clears throat> it only added to my misery. 
And for some reason, life just seemed meaningless. And even, and, and even when I would go to church, I would go to church, and I would hear the sermon, the preacher, and the prayers, and the songs. But then when I would leave church, I would feel worse, much worse than when I came, because now I'm condemned. I'm feeling condemned about my life. I'm feeling condemned about the things I've done. And... <clears throat> um. I couldn't stop. It was like I can't. How do I stop doing these things that God doesn't like, and He's going to put me in hell for forever? Okay, and and the thought of Him putting me in hell forever that didn't come across to me as Him loving me at all. Um, I would think <clears throat> I thought, well, if He loved me, he'd just get me free, get me free, and. Uh, so I can live and be and enjoy life. I just want to enjoy life. Okay. So I didn't. I didn't. And see, coming up, I didn't experience much love. I mean, we we were in a family where we didn't express much love. Okay, we didn't. We 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 loved each other, I guess, but we just didn't show it or express it. We didn't know how to express it. My mom and dad, they came from a family that <clears throat> they didn't express love. My dad came from a family where, I guess, I guess the, there was just no love. Between them, his brothers, his dad, none of them. <clears throat> My mother came from a family where um, life was kind of tough with her, too. So we didn't, do, we didn't show much love. I didn't have much love to show, either. And even when I met my wife, you know, I used to, I thought, after thinking about it, you know, I thought, you know, I, the reason why I was so mean to her sometimes was because I didn't have anything to give her. There was nothing in me to give her. Nothing was put in me. I didn't, I just didn't have anything. And and it was hard for me to love her. I didn't love myself. I didn't care about myself. And so I was just always miserable. And the only thing I could give her was misery. The only thing I could give my children was misery because that's all that was in me. That, that was all that was in me. So pretty much my entire life, and not my entire life, because <clears throat> I believe God from this, just here recently, I believe he's told me that uh, I'm going to find the peace and joy that I've been looking for. And, uh, you know, for years, for a long time, I used to, uh, so what would be the word for this? I would appear to be lazy to some people because I was always looked like I was always sleeping or relaxing or lounging or just uh, laying around, but it wasn't that. I asked God once, I said, Lord, why do I do that? And he said, you're trying to find rest. And that made a lot of sense because I was. And that was my way of trying to rest my soul. But <clears throat> anyway, the second time I was suicidal, I was uh, I went back to drinking. God clearly told me, don't go back to drinking. I went back and smoking weed, and I was crazy as I don't know what. And I got in some serious trouble during that time. But I remember also during that time, when I became suicidal, I had uh, thoughts of suicide and thoughts of killing other people, and uh, and my mind would go blank sometimes. My mind would just go blank, <clears throat> and when I when when my when I would come to my senses, I would find myself doing something dangerous that could hurt myself or could hurt somebody else. So that was my second time of suicide, of having contemplating suicide. The third time I was, uh, let's see, oh, I was just having, I was just having, I was having a lot of problems. Uh, it was some, some psychological problems. Psychological problems, emotional problems, just some things just was going crazy. 
marital problems, family problems, problems in the church, getting fired from my job. My boss come called me in my office, pretty much cursed me, not cuss me, but cursed me. I mean, it was just a lot of problems. I mean, I forgive them. I forgive them all of them. God knows I do. I, I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven, so I forgive them. That's not a problem. But, <clears throat> I mean, it was just a lot of things. Just, I mean, and so, eventually, uh, I was, it broke me. Eventually, it broke me. All those problems just broke me. And, and I didn't realize I was suicidal at the time, but I went to church and my brother called me up. He was my pastor at the time. And he called me up and he started praying and he started uh, speaking against the spirit of suicide. But I didn't know I was suicidal. But sure enough, it was like a week later. I uh, was riding down the highway in my truck, going to another city to make a delivery. And, and that thought of suicide came on me. And <clears throat> now here's another thing about suicide, the spirit of suicide. It felt really good. It felt really good. I've heard of people before they commit suicide, they are very happy. I've heard of people being like that. When I felt the spirit of suicide to drive this truck off the road, off the cliff, or wherever it was, it was, it was enough speed and the terrain was rugged enough to kill me. When I felt that, it felt really good, really good. And under that, <clears throat> under that kind of uh, influence, I guess you would call it, I guess, I could have done it. But because I believe my pastor prayed for me, and then the assistant pastor, I think he was assistant pastor, pray for me and <clears throat> uh, I believe God kept me from it. I believe he kept me. Now, I was at the age of 40, about 41, 42 then. About 42. Okay. And again, here recently, just recently, I after Lee getting out of the hospital with COVID, now they, they tell me that a lot of COVID patients uh, are suicidal after they get over COVID and some of them fall into depression. So maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Maybe it was the medication they gave me. I don't know if it's the aftermath of COVID. I don't know what it was, <clears throat> but it was real. This time it was, it was worse than all the other times. The first time, now the first time I was suicidal, I didn't have a nerve. I, I didn't have the nerve to kill myself, I would go and I would put the take a gun and put it to my head and I would think, man, I sure like to end it all. But I knew that if I died, God would probably reject me, so I didn't I didn't pull the trigger. So what I did one time, this was the first time when I was a teenager. So what I did, I took a gun, I put it in my hand. I was out in my, living in Los Angeles at the time. And so, you know, I said, I don't have nerve enough to shoot myself, so I'm going to make a police officer shoot me. That's what I'm going to do. So I, I got a gun, I put it in my hand, I walked down the street. I walked a long ways with that gun in my hand. People saw me, they looked out the windows, they looked out, standing in their driveway, they saw me, they were afraid, they just looked at me, they stared at me, and then they just eased back in the house. And I had this gun in my hand, I was walking down the street, I said, the first police officer I see... I'm going to point this gun at him and I'm going to make him shoot me. And I think it'll be easier that way to commit suicide. But anyway, I never saw a police officer. And I was, I was like, wow, I, I can't believe it. Any other time I see police officers cruising them down the street. But I walked a very long ways looking for a police officer. And I didn't know what a police station was, so I just figured, you know, <clears throat> I should be able to find one, find a cop out here. But anyway, I never did find one. Okay, that was the first time. But the fourth time, just here recently, uh, I really, really didn't want to live. I really didn't. From the depths of my heart, I didn't. From the depths of my heart, I didn't. And 
to be honest, if God, I, to be honest, I, I'm I'm looking forward to my day that God called me. I, I, the Bible said be anxious for nothing, so I can't be anxious for that. But I'm really looking forward to getting out of this life and getting it over with. Now, while I'm here, though, I'm gonna try to make the best of it. I'm going to try to make the best of it. And that's what I've been trying to do ever since I've been here, but things just have not been the way I would like. But anyway, I'm going to tell you something that's going to help you, that helped me. This last time, I was suicidal. Uh, which just here, just a few, couple, two, three months ago. Uh, God was speaking to me, and he was giving me instructions on doing this, doing that, stop doing this, stop doing that. And I was sitting there that last time on my bed, and I thought, I really, really would like to check out. And I said, Lord, would you get me out of this? He said, would you, I said, would you get me out of this? I mean, I, I, from the depths of my heart. And whenever I speak to God from the depths of my heart, he always answers just like that. Always. I said, I really would like to get out of this. I really would like to check out. I really, you, you really got to get me out of this. And when I said that, he said, do what I told you and I'll get you out. Now, here's the answer to suicide, thoughts, or impressions. If you are contemplating suicide and you really want to die, I'm going to tell you what you do. You say, Lord Jesus, what is it that you want me to do? Because every time I was, every time I was suicidal, I was out of God's will. Every time I was out of his will. And this is the answer. You say, Lord Jesus, what is it that you want me to do? Remember Saul and Judas, they were out of God's will. Okay? Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because I guarantee you, you're out of his will somewhere. You're doing something. You're saying something. You're, you're, you're doing something that is out of his will. Or you're not doing something. That you should be doing. And find out Lord. What is it that you want me to do. Or want me to stop doing. And I guarantee you. He'll help you. He's going to fix it. You will not be suicidal. I, I know some people. Y'all probably know some people that are suicidal. But. You know the homosexuals. A lot of them are suicidal. You know, And they blame the Christians. If you're a homosexual and you're suicidal, I'm going to tell you what you do. You say, God, what do you want me to do? Or what you want me to stop doing? And I'll stop it. And I, I'll do it. I guarantee you, I promise you, you will not be suicidal anymore. Now, do I have, am I, do I still have the desire to want to leave? Yes, I still have the desire to want to leave because life just is not or hasn't been. But I, you know what? I believe things are changing even as I speak for me, though. Okay, I believe they are. But what I found out, if my heart, if I got my heart tangled up into something else more than Christ, that can be a problem. This gonna all, you're going to always be disappointed. You're going to always get hurt. If you're loving something or even someone more than you love Christ, you're going to always be hurt. Okay? You're going to always be hurting. You can't love your children, your wife, your husband, your dog, your cat, your house, your car, nothing more than you love Christ. You can't do it and expect to be happy. It's not going to happen. Uh, there are some people, you got to stay close to Christ. you got to stay close to Him. Okay, the answer to this problem is, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I'll do it. You got to do it. If you find out, you you got to turn the television off. Don't watch on TV. Don't eat. Don't be doing a lot of eating, a lot of talking, a lot of playing, a lot of going out, a lot of YouTubing, a lot of 
Don't be doing any of that stuff. Just stop. Get quiet. Get still before God and say, God, what do you want of me? What do you want of me? And if you do that, and he, he will give you the answer, and you follow his instructions, he will lead you out of suicide. Okay? I don't care if you're an ex-COVID patient, LGBT, military personnel, I don't care who you are, he will lead you out of suicide. Okay? And uh, he will lead you to higher ground. But you've got to go before him and say, Lord, what is it that you want? I'll do what you ask. you got to do that. Every time I was in suicidal, I was out of God's will. I was not doing something he told me to do, or I started doing something that he told me not to do. Every time, in, the, in two people that commit suicide in the Bible, Saul and Judas, those are the ones I can think of right now. They were totally out of God's will. Listen, if you're suicidal, you're out of his will. You're doing something he don't want you to be doing. Okay, Or you're not doing something that he wants you to do. Find out, Lord, what is it that you want? Turn the TV off. Get away from people. Stop talking and laughing and all that stuff. And uh, put, the, put, the, put the internet down. Just and find out, God, what is it? All right? That's the key. That's the answer. What is it? Because this last time I was suicidal, I was really, I was really wanting to get out of here, man. And he said, do what I told you, and I'll get you out. Now, when he get me out, that's up to him. But I'm not, but in the meantime, I'm not uh, desiring to kill myself in the meantime. Okay, I'm hanging tough, you know, and... I'm still not as happy as I would like to be, but that's coming. Okay, that's coming, and I've been in these valleys before, and he's got me out. He's going to get me out this time. Okay, that's the answer, y'all. Uh, find out, God, what is it that you want, and get you some scriptures, the book of Psalms, and read those. Find There's one in there for you, I guarantee you. There is there there is a specific scripture in the book of Psalms, you gotta look for it, that will fit you specifically for you. And believe me, if you read it, read it out loud, verbally out loud, it's gonna change how you feel on the inside. I hope you remember that, okay? It's gonna change how you feel on the inside. Alright? Alright. Uh I should call this this, these videos, End Time Harvest Ministries. I think that's what I'll start calling it from now on. The End Time Harvest Ministries. Because God gave me that many years ago. But anyway, don't worry, man. Ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to stop doing? And do it. I guarantee he's going to get you out. All right? God bless you all.